Hello and welcome to my channel Bobo Bun So Vintage Life. I'm Lisa, a vintage inspired dressmaker and dressmaking teacher and I love to share my passion for sewing with you all on here and on my Instagram feed and obviously in the classes that I teach. So yeah I'm really enjoying being part of here so if you're new to joining then a big welcome and hello and if you're coming back for more then that's lovely to have you on board. In today's video I'm going to be looking at some of my recent makes because I thought you might be interested in the process of what inspired me to make them, the design decisions I made, the fitting um, adjustments I had to do, that kind of thing, what I'm hoping to wear them for, what, what's their purpose. So yeah, I decided that's what I'd like to look at today and I thought you might find that interesting. So I shall see you back here in a moment. <laughs> I've got lots of ideas going through my head of things I'd like to make. Um, I have various projects that I'm halfway through and I really need to finish. I'm a bit of a creative butterfly that um, I get another idea in my head or some fabric I've got in my stash and then I just want to run with it, which is the case with this gorgeous dress that's on the mannequin, which is one of my most like happy mix of late. So I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Um, yeah, so I've put some projects to one side. I've been learning or you know teaching myself how to draft my own pattern blocks. So that's on hold at the moment because I've just been busy sewing plus I'm um, creating more workshops which I've been advertising promoting. You know, being a um, self-employed um, dressmaker and you've got to learn how to um, you know create all your advertising, make all your posters, do the marketing and PR and do all the bookings and payments and design the courses and film my videos and yeah you have to really be a jack of all trades so a lot I'm learning as I go I film improving with lots but there's some bits that are oh, like all the technical how do you create a website and yeah all of that is just making my head whir and spin but we will get there eventually so yeah so some of my same projects have like gone to that to be saved piles some are current and because I just get obsessed about the latest thing and I want to do that. So last week I saw this amazing um, dress on, that my friend was making and it was from a pattern in a book that I've got that just didn't inspire me at the time. Um, I'll show you which pattern I mean. I've had this book for ages. It's Gertie's Ultimate Dress Book. So you see this, it's the rockabilly dress. Now it's very nice and everything, there's nothing wrong with this pattern. I don't know if it's the styling, the fabric, but it just never inspired me to think oh, I want to make that. My friend Kat made a version, this beautiful, beautiful vintage fabric that she found, like greens and, greens and reds. And I will pop a picture up because I'm sure she won't mind. She's a very, very talented costumier that used to work Royal Opera House and um, on various sets and things um, and now she's a, a vintage dressmaker but she made this dress and it just elevated my interest for this this bodice in particular and I just thought I really want to make it and it's the feature of the rick rack I don't know if you can see online this rick rack around the neckline I loved how that made the v-neck stand out and I'm all for if we can put a bit more bling on a dress. I love all the finishing details, but a little bit of extra, you know, the bows or piping, the belts, um, always put a brooch on a frock. Um, so I always like those other little bits, you know, that give something interest. Um, so yeah, I hadn't started making this dress first. This one I haven't finished. I cut out this bodice. Well, I say I cut out this bodice, um, so that was the inspiration for this dress. I knew I'd got the pattern, so I um, traced the pattern off, and graded between the sizes for my high bust to my waist. Um, fortunately, I didn't have to do a full bust adjustment, which was quite amazing, but I did have to move the bust start down. I always have to do that. It's really annoying having a bust that's low on your body. I do mention this in other videos because on my mannequin here, 
I pulled this dress back, but look, I'm missing these two inches on me. So it looks like she doesn't fit very well. Her boobs are here, mine are here. This bodice fits me like a glove. It just is an amazing fit. I feel absolutely gorgeous in it. But you don't get the full picture on Foxy Lady because we've got slightly different boobage placements and you know how they sit and point and all of that stuff. So, so I did the pattern alterations I needed and I think I had to make a couple of twirls yeah to just get it spot on so that I was happy. A lot of last week seemed to be making various twirls. I've got a bag here I'll show you um, to show you this is stuff full with last week's twirls for about three different dress projects so um, I don't know if you saw that but anyway it's a big bag. Um, so yeah ones I'm trying to um, nail. The whole process of fitting can take a while but it's really worth it and whenever I do a new pattern I will always um, you know have to adjust, alter, do the twirls and make sure I get it right before I'm going to cut my precious cloth especially if it's vintage that's one-off cloth you're not going to get necessarily get that again very unlikely so don't want to make any mistakes with it. So I always twirl um, and that's why I like a few bodice shapes that I know I'm going to use with lots of different skirts and whatnot and then I don't have to do the work every time. Uh, so I'd done all the alterations and I thought first off I've got this beautiful fabric and this is from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn and I've got this stunning fabric from them. I think it's like a viscose, just feels really beautiful. It feels more like a really soft cotton but it reminded me of uh, the American feed sack prints just love the colours, there's reds and blues, greys, greens, ugly greens, white. I thought this would just go with everything. And whenever I look at a fabric, I always think, I picture all my shoe colours. I love my rings and accessories and brooches and my cardigans. They're the main things I always pair everything with. So I always think, what will that go with in my wardrobe of accessories? And that's how I buy my fabric. If I've got nothing to go with it, or you know, it's not a colour I really like, then I wouldn't go with that. It's got to work. So I've got all of these colours. They're some of my favourites. The only thing that's not in here is pink, but I love everything else. So I made this twirl because I was really excited to get on with trying this bodice. Once I'd seen cats, then I just was desperate to see how this worked. And it's got the cutest little puffed sleeves with a little band around the bottom here you know which you hand sew in and the puff sleeves don't stand up as much in this because it's a very lightweight fabric this is um, a cotton stretch cotton sateen it's a dead stock fabric so it's got a bit more body to it so I'm considering whether I put um, a shoulder ruffle in which is a Petersham ribbon that you um, gather up you know you pleat up just to make them stand a little bit absolutely thrilled with the shape of the v-neck and it goes around to the back there and then you lay this rickrack all the way round. Now the only problem, things bug me a bit, but it's the softness of the fabric. I stay stitched the v-neck because when you're cutting fabric on the bias especially it's always going to stretch out terribly. So the first thing you need to do before you handle it is stay stitch it. But I stay stitched it, I added stay tape, the, um, the facing is also um, interfaced with very lightweight woven interfacing. I've understitched, but one side, I can't remember which side it is, one side just ripples slightly. I think I can kind of work that out if I put some bra clips in the shoulders just to pull it up a little bit tauter. Or I could put um, an invisible stay, you know, that goes from the neckline up to the shoulder just to pull that fabric out. You know, it's going to have to be something secret and hidden because it's none it's going to bug me, you know, and sometimes despite all your sewing efforts to stop something stretching, it still does. And then you just have a big grrr moment. But there we go. It's not ruined beyond all hope. So I made this one knowing that I wanted this to be more of a daytime frock. So I make the bodice, um, and this is with all my makes, and then I think, well, what do I want to wear it for? What kind of feel do I want? So that helps me decide on the skirt. So for this one, I'm doing my self-drafted box pleat skirt, um, which is lovely, just cut out two huge rectangles. Um, and then I will sew at the side and put the pocket in, you know, on this right side here, sew and put the pockets in on that side. Um, and because I love a side zip, side zips are the way to go for me because 
then I know I can get in the dress. I don't need help for getting in it. So this has got a side zip. So of course then with a the pocket, you've got to make sure it's all sewn at the front, to put the zip in behind the pocket. Totally other long-winded technique when they're all doable, a bit fiddly fiddly, but really worth it. And that's rather wonderful. So that's what I do with my box pleat skirt. And then I will lay the fabric out, finding the centre point, and I will measure out and do all my box pleats so they match where the darts are and the side seams. And, and then I will sew my box pleats, making it sound easier than it is. But that's what I do. So that's all here, ready to go with the pockets um, having been sewn. I don't know, I've, I've pinned it or something, the pockets are all here and blah, blah, blah. So, so I decided on a box pleat skirt. As you can see, I've not finished the first one I started, but I have finished this one. So I started this one, it's probably last Friday or something. And then I teach most of Saturday. Um, so I start teaching at nine in the morning and I get home about two o'clock. On my way to teach on Saturday morning, I couldn't stop thinking about the bodice, the one I've just shown you. And I've got this gorgeous fabric, all folded up, this dead stock fabric. And it was going to be something else. I didn't want to cut into it till I've got the wrong project. And all I could think on my drive to um, teaching was that fabric's going to look amazing if it was in that bodice and I could just see a hot pink rick rack. Um, and I also got the feeling with another one, but I've changed my mind now with another fabric. So the first thing I did after I finished um, teaching was drove down to the sewing shop so I could buy the rick rack so I could get home and cut that fabric out. And that's what I mean about being like a creative butterfly because I was actually doing something else, you know, but my brain wanted to stop that project I was in the middle of plus another one because all I could think about was seeing how this fabric will work um, and as I started to make it everything about it just worked so beautifully these little sleeves really stand up I feel it's got quite a 30s late 30s kind of feel to this shape bodice um, and you know, the sleeves but as I was sewing it, we're going to a wedding on Saturday of this week and I just knew it'd be the perfect dress. So I'd stopped the dress I was making to wear, even though I have got more than enough dresses to wear to a wedding. But I stopped. Um, I just knew this dress was going to be the perfect one. Now I put a side zip in and then I thought a pencil skirt might be quite nice. But pencil skirts limit because I know I don't wear them as much. You know, I feel they're more like going out. I don't know. I just feel a bit more constrained I can't cycle in them or whatever and dance and move <clears throat> but I wanted something with smooth lines so um yeah I've got these pockets so that led me to going back to my good old favorite the Butterick 6055 skirt just thought that's just going to be perfect and of course once I did that I thought yeah I can put my rickrack I had enough rickrack to go around the pockets to tie the two in and then on the floor I brought some shoes to show you <clears throat> I've been looking for a few years now for the ideal black heels that I wanted and I found these in my friend's shoe shop they're fly aren't they beautiful silver I know I love these wedges they're suede and they remind me of the rickrack on the dress they've got that frill and frill around there so suede at the front and there's at the back oh they're just gorgeous I love them they're so comfortable and high heels and just utterly, utterly gorgeous. So I'll be wearing those and painting my nails like a bright pink. Um, so yeah, dead happy with this dress. I can't wait to put it on and show you all what it looks like. So that was those. Um, and then I've got the dress that I'm wearing. Now I did um, show you from my vintage haul this pattern came after having made this dress because I made another version of this dress last year. I'll take my cardigan off. This um, bodice is the Rita blouse of which I have made an absolute ton. Dresses made from them, blouses, all sorts. Um, I was going to make a bow for this. I might still make a bow because I do like the bow on the neckline. Um, but yeah, this is, um, again, this is like a, a crepe from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn again. It's just this beautiful, beautiful apple green. Um, I was just, I'll pop, I was gonna stand up, but it's easier if I pop a picture on, isn't it, of me wearing it to show you. So it's the Rita blouse, but I will just stand up a little bit just to show you, and it's that swishy tiered, <coughs> it's cut, tiered skirt, sorry, my voice went funny. So it's the swishy tiered skirt, which takes utterly ages to do with all the gathering, and but it's just worth it. It just feels a delight to wear. 
So I made a version of this in black um, last year and I've put this skirt on um, another dress. I just love it. It's just such a flattering, lovely skirt. And um, then afterwards I found this pattern, which is as near as darn it. It's the same dress. So I love this vintage original. You know, that 50s um, style, that sort of peasant style, which would come from you know very sort of Austrian influences and South American countries and yeah it's just very much you know the um the influences of the era so I'm really glad that I've kind of made that way so maybe one day I'll actually have a go at making it from this original pattern as well but this is just lovely to wear I finished sewing this this morning you know pop the the zip in and I always use um stay tape um, you know to stabilize where my zip is you know so it doesn't all move otherwise you'll be sewing down from one side then you sew down from the other and the fabric can like shift off slightly so stay tape helps stabilize that um, fabric so yeah I've <clears throat> popped my zip in sewed the side and hemmed it and I was able to pop the frock on to go out do my shopping and come back so really pleased and I'll wear this for uh, teaching tonight and I'm really really thrilled with that so that's three dresses so I guess what I'm just thinking I haven't mentioned about my decision um, with zips yeah so I always decide I prefer the side zip unless it say it's a fitted dress or hard to get into it's easier to put a back zip you know so you can actually get your bum through the whole thing but when it's these big wide skirts whatever it works really well and then I can get in the dress but for this one I was thinking of doing um, a side lap zip, which works really well. And it was, I don't know if you can see that, but it's very tricky behind the pocket. So I have to stop the zip here, trying to get it in. But the fabric is quite thick. So the lap zip actually stood at an angle. It looked really clunky. So I took that out and decided to put an invisible zip in. So that's where I've got with that. I think, um, yeah, Rick Rack seems to be my current obsession. Last year's obsession was putting in piping into dresses so did a lot of that last year just I'm just looking at all these lovely tins I wish you could see them in front of I did show you a photo at the beginning but look it's just these beautiful things my ribbons and all my rickrack and my piping and all my lovely um, ribbons there's uh, Edwardian ones there Victorian and you know obviously newer than that but just all my lovely trims and these are just some of my buttons i've got masses of buttons so that's an old traveling iron pin and then in front of me i mean i've got loads of fabric in the drawers and cupboards but these are my latest that uh, i want to work on next these beautiful roses this glorious fabric here which i think has got a real vintage vibe that's a slightly stretched one this beautiful beautiful blue gingham here and then this 1970s sheet so I'm going to keep those out so I can keep looking at them and get the ideas of what I want them to become I'm already seeing white and blue rickrack near some of these and I'm just like oh. just the mind flutters away with all the things you want to do so I think I've told you everything I wanted to tell you today it's just like a general catch-up what I've been selling what I'm doing oh and the other thing I'll just pop this on this is actually uh, my poinsettia brooch, the white version. I made a red one as well for Christmas. Um, so it'll be very blingy and sparkly for Christmas, but I thought it just looked so good on this dress. So that's why I've got on a festive season um, brooch on a summer dress. Anyway, that's enough for now, I think. So thank you for joining me today. Um, it's lovely to have you here. Okay. Um, if you'd like to subscribe then please hit the button it's like my face that turns up at the end if not you could touch that um, you know join in comment I always reply it's lovely to talk to you um, give you any tips if you want them and um, just like and join in I'm really enjoying it I can't believe you know I've got over 500 followers now so it's just it's just really really lovely knowing that people are enjoying the videos that I'm creating really really enjoy it so thank you so much have a lovely time whatever you're doing and i shall see you next week bye